We have no voicemail. Intro! Good evening. This is Beers and Sundries Podcast News, your one-stop news shop every Sunday, with your host, Jay. Another host, Anthony. And another host, Joe. We're your Beards and Sundries hosts and news anchors for Season 5 of Beards and Sundries. And welcome back. <laughs> Hi! Hello! I'm fine. <laughs> Hello. Did you not look fine at all. <laughs> I just I just went sprinting in dress clothing before this, okay? Leave me alone. Welcome back to the Beards and Sundries News Network. With all the news, it's fit to print. And Yay. broadcast. Wonderful. Grand. <laughs> <laughs> this just in, weather outside, sweaty. <laughs> weather outside, not a cold enough front quite yet for me. <laughs> But that's right, guys. It is time for another lunch break here at the Beards and Sundries News Network slash Lunchroom, uh, the shop where three gay men with beards do inventory on a new sundry in each episode. My name is Jay, and... Shoop! 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 I love soup. I freaking knew it. You look like you're making soup. <laughs> you are a soup right now. Well, right now, I'm... Kind of soupy down there. You're soupy oh, everywhere. Oh. I can see it sweating <laughs> through your shirt. <laughs> it, it'll dry. Don't worry. By the end of this episode, <laughs> he's stirring that soup down there. All right. Yeah, there's this. So it's stirred for sure. <laughs> it's a chicken noodle. <laughs> <laughs> Just one chicken <laughs> and one noodle <laughs> and one noodle and one carrot. <laughs> Anyways, I'm Anthony, a cold brew whore in pumpkin spice stockings and a peppermint mocha beanie. God, you homo. Hallelujah, for sure. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm the biggest basic white bitch during winter and fall. Well, we know. They know. And I'm Joe, and you might hear frost advisory, but all I hear is turn off the HVAC and open up the windows. And that means that today's sundry item is crisp fall weather. Beardo's spooky month is in full swing, and Oklahoma is finally feeling the weather effects of the best season of the year. Soup, football, movies, comfort food, comfy clothes, and best of all, well, for at least two of us, no more sweating. Today, we are going to chat about the weather finally being bearable, and after oh, the break, shit. we're going to talk about a small downside of the seasonal change, an increase in laundry, folding, storage, and more. But before we don our favorite hoodies and fire up the soup cauldron, how about this week's lack of a voicemail? I want to know more about what just happened to Jay. <laughs> I forgot that the door to my spare bathroom and bedroom, spare bedroom where I'm at, was open, and Reggie came in to mess with kitty cats, and they were disturbed. <laughs> I can see they're like running for high ground. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this right now. This is uh, the most disheveled you've ever been. Just started recording. I, <laughs> Look at that. They're am, both up on your desk. I am very disheveled right now. I love it. This is it how is, we can do every recording. It is a disheveled day for me. <laughs> Joe and, and I both on time and ready and well put together. And you just frazzled out of your mind. <laughs> you've heard of Miss Frizzle? Get ready for Miss Frazzle. <laughs> I come sprinting in and I'm like, record, record now. You guys didn't get to see it, but that's basically what happened before we hit the record button. <laughs> well, we're we're on a time crunch tonight and I didn't want to hold us up for a good episode. So I was just like, go, go now. <laughs> so what happened? Did he like run in and they went for high ground? Uh, he scoped them out and they were under the bed and then he wants to bother them. And so they were under the bed going, Meh! and I had to like throw them. <laughs> Yeet. He's just been in a mood today where he thinks it's the, it's the weather change. He's just your, being a little fucking shit. Being basic. It's your frenetic energy. He's feeding off of it. He's just eating yeah. it up. Well, he's like, this guy is in a hurry and things feel chaotic. So I think. I'm going to blend with his vibe. 
and just be <laughs> fucking crazy. <laughs> He's all about it. Frenchies are. We're crazy out like walking. That. Oh my god, we're out walking, and I'm like literally grabbing the handle on his harness. And I'm like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That was Joe he's this like, morning with Ricky. He's like trying yeah. to bother other dogs that he kept seeing. And I'm like, stop it, you little fuck. Let's get the <laughs> hell out of here. <laughs> Jesus. Well, I'm glad you made it on time-ish. I did. Ish. And only a little sweaty. Yeah. See, you can't even barely yeah. tell. Oh, wait, Your never mind. Actually, is almost dry. Worse. <laughs> 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 My shirt, I thought, was going away, but it's actually just turning into one giant wet blotch now. So, Well, we don't have a voicemail to talk about. So, Joe, can you tell me where to find the Vix Fable Cool? Are they in the Sundry Isles? Because I have been sick ever since it turned October. Before we talk about the Sundry Isle, I'd like to give you all a nice little update on Anthony and I. Uh, we might have talked about this a couple of times, but we've been talking about redoing the flooring in our house. And as of this recording, the flooring in our master bedroom is complete. And it is beautiful, and it's symmetrical, and it looks really good, and it looks like a different room. Because we also got the bug a little bit, and we decided to paint the walls. So now the bedroom is a nice dark bluish gray color. So it's nice, and it, I, I think it feels warmer, and it is nice to have it darker in the mornings when we're trying to sleep in a little bit. And the flooring looks beautiful. And all we have left to do is we're going to paint a couple window sills and we're going to install some new baseboards and door trim. And then the bedroom will be finished. Thank God. But we were able to sleep in our own bed last night. Thank God. Oh, Ugh. I missed our bed. I missed our Ugh. bed too. But anyways, not. besides mm -hmm. spare paint rollers, trim paint, and trim brushes in the sundries aisle, if you guys are new to the show and you're just wondering what the hell a sundry is, the term comes from an old English word meaning odds and ends. Now today it's used mainly in retail as a way to group together items that don't typically have a group of their own. So as three very fair weathered gay men with beards, we are using the term to group together the wide range of topics that we cover. Yay! Uh, wow. There it is. <laughs> Got distracted. <laughs> Even I was sitting there going, what's happening? Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, fall is in full swing, finally. Both, you know, physically, emotionally, and climatically. Climactically. <laughs> Say it a little sexier for the beardos. I know they're going to use it. Climactically, huh? There you go. Orgasmically. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know why, but I thought you meant or gas. Like two separate words or space gas, and then I got there. My brain is moving really Natural slow today. Gas. Petroleum, <laughs> farts, <laughs> hydrogen, <laughs> methane. methane. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Well, it's kind of like that word. Moving right along. I, I feel like we just did that word game where we're spitting out words until we finally say the same one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. So. We have all of the windows in the house open right now because the high today is 70 degrees for the first time in God knows how long in this fucking hell state, hellscape of a state. Eh, well, so nice. Work. And uh, it's really extra great because we did just put like two layers of paint on the bedroom. So it's nice to have it aired out. And... <laughs> yeah, it's nice to not get high so quick. Well, it yeah, didn't bother and, me that know, much last high night. High the wrong way. Like, I wear my CPAP at night, and so it's not a problem for me. I get to breathe filtered air all night. Yeah, it filters right out. Yeah. Well, we were smell. also we were also cutting four planks in the garage with a table saw, so it was nice to be able to have the garage door open and not suffocate from the heat, so that was nice too. Yep. Mm, floor yeah. planks. And I learned that the table saw can move to a 45 degree angle. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. Usually, I Good. do all the home improvement stuff, and Joe had to show me that. Good job, Joe. So next up is the hallway and then the living room. But those should be a little bit easier because, one, we're not painting any walls and we're also not replacing any baseboards or trim. So knock on my fake desk wood. That should be easier than the bedroom has been. Listen, particle board is wood. It's just like ground beef. <laughs> <laughs> it is just like ground beef. It's in every 20 beef. It's the ground beef of wood. <laughs> it's the ground beef of wood. I put it in hamburger. It is. Helper. 
Ooh, I love hamburger helper, bitch. Don't you oh, say those words, man? To me. I haven't had Comfort stuff. Like, I haven't had that in forever. Granted, I used yeah, to always do the Velveeta kind. Hell yeah, we have. I had love when that stuff's on sale since Friday. I <laughs> can't be <a> spoken off. <laughs> <laughs> I used to always do that, and I would put like I would mix hamburger and sausage, I think, or maybe I would just do hamburger. Fuck if I remember. And then I would like pour in the peas and carrot mix because I want the veggies, and so it's like this really cheesy casserole. Mm. I've been craving like um because it's fall outside. I've been craving chili, and I've been craving chicken pot pie. Have been like in the back of my mind screaming at me i almost made chili instead of doing the stroganoff but then i got lazy because i haven't been feeling well i've been under the weather since like the very first of this month and then today was somehow the worst of it so far because i woke up to go like my alarm went off for work and i got up and immediately went to the bathroom and hacked up like everything in my lungs which was all concrete and then i was like you know what I feel awful, so I'm not going to go do that today. And then I didn't. I went back to bed. Yeah, mm, I, I hate being yeah. sick, but the feeling I get when I blow my nose and I get like a gallon of mucus that comes out of my nose, it's just so rewarding. I love it. It's so rewarding, but then also immediately disappointing when you suddenly start feeling it build back up. And I'm like, okay, I can't do this forever. <laughs> yeah. But there's that brief moment where you... I know this is so sexy, but you like look at your Kleenex and you're like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> so Joe gets on to me a lot because like I have a really hard time getting like phlegm out of my body, but I physically have a hard time doing it. Like I can get it to come out of my nose if it goes back into my throat, but then I can't cough it back up and I can't blow it out. Like, it's really rare for me to blow it out unless my nose is actively running. I can the maybe only, do it in the shower because of the steam, but that's about it. The only reason I give you a hard time is because all that stuff that goes down the back of your throat, that's what irritates your throat and makes your throat mm. sore. And that's always yeah. the worst part of a cold for me. So if I can get rid of all that stuff and prevent the sore throat, then I'm at least a little more tolerable with a head cold. I feel like I have been breathing in construction dust for the last two weeks, which is actually what I have been doing. So <laughs> yeah, I do saw dust in the garage. <laughs> I do love this time of year because like I wake up with a sore throat inevitably one day and I'm like, is this sick sore throat or is this sinus drainage sore throat? Sick sore throat, sinus drainage. So it's I'm like both. sitting here going, I'll do a swallow and I'm like, okay, so it doesn't burn in the front part. It just scratchy itches scratches from the back okay it's drainage <laughs> and then i'll be like i'm fine <laughs> are you still talking about your throat yeah, yeah. usually <laughs> <laughs> How's your oh head? well when i when i say itchy <laughs> we're talking about something else which for some reason changes subject sorry <laughs> the hives are back and it's really bad this time <laughs> <laughs> well, this sunday i was out with basically friends of friends um my friends had other friends down from chicago and they wanted me to meet them and we were out at dinner and we were around kids and so he was trying to be Ew. polite instead of saying herpes he said the herpty derpty do <laughs> <laughs> or the herpy derpy roo that's what it was i like both of them those are great and so <laughs> like it's, it's been stuck in my head now and i'm like oh no don't get the herpy derpy roo <laughs> just imagining like a like an educational episode of scooby-doo Herpy derpy do, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like in the seventies, like you know, choppy yeah, <laughs> film, the and it's like cells. herpy derpy roo, <laughs> or it's somebody talking, and then the film stops, and then the clip of a mouth pops up, and it says herpy derpy roo. Ew. <laughs> Don't get <laughs> syphilis, chlamydia, or herpy derpy roo. <laughs> I I just I'm imagining my doctor walking into the fucking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> room that I'm waiting at <laughs> when I'm getting my checkup, and he's like, I have bad news for you. You tested positive for herpy derpy root. <laughs> we got your test results here, and it's positive for the herpy derpy root. <laughs> so you're gonna, you're honestly, gonna it takes suck. the sting out of it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we found the killer, it's the peepee poo poo man. <laughs> I mean, that kind of sucks, but. Tea. 
that is that was like a small trend in horror for a hot minute where they were naming horror movies like the silliest things there's one called the bye bye man and it's like <laughs> don't say his name or don't think about him and i was like how could you not he's called the bye bye man i almost at this point want to challenge him to be real because i want to find out why he's called the bye bye man that's so fucking <laughs> stupid because it wasn't Justin Timberlake, or else it would have been the Bye 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 Man. Oh, that's mm-hmm. a good one. Okay, clap, clap, clap. Very smart <laughs> joke. But he clap, 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 tied to the clap. crime because there were no strings attached. That one was bad. Boo! Just like the name of that album. Ooh! Ooh, Joe, I've got bad news. Here it says on your medical file you've been <laughs> diagnosed with the clappy, clappy roo. <laughs> <laughs> If you got herpes and you know it, clap your... Oh, no, it's an infection. Ah. <laughs> oh, it's the sippy whiffy whitis. Yeah. God. <laughs> this has commercial potential. This whole thing is nonsense. What is the... What, how did we even get here? We, we should literally just do a commercial of an old-fashioned style, like, high school medical video about catching the clap. Oh, yeah. my It's only God. been like this since... Uh, July 2022. <laughs> Would that be July 17th of 2022? Jay I don't know. Actually... When does the market open, Anthony? Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> you guys think you're so fucking funny. But I heard the episode where I wasn't there. And let me tell you. It wasn't very funny. Whether or not you were funny. (laughs) Oh, yeah, it wasn't. We were not funny. We're a trio that makes us funny. Right. Yeah, you're you're not funny unless you have me to beat up on you, assholes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. He's not wrong, Jay. That's the dynamic. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Am I funny? No, but somehow when we are all three together, it works. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, like me by myself would be the whole horrible show but oh, us God. together it's I great would talk i would talk at length about anything that came into my head and then it would just be word vomit through multiple subjects until i think how did i fucking get here so that's our therapy podcast that is our therapy podcast that's <laughs> exactly what that is we're having therapy but we keep dodging therapy so we can just go down a path of conversation i go to my i see my therapist bitch <laughs> yeah i, I see my therapy. real therapist yeah Joe was like, this conversation is boring. Good for you, though. So I'm tired, and I can tell you why. So remember those new floors I mentioned just a little bit ago? (laughs) Yes, tell us more. Our Corgi Ricky has these perfect little tippy-tap claws that he has on his feet. And he spent all night walking around the room while we were trying to sleep. Tap, 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 tap. All night. I don't know if he used to do that when we had carpet in there or if he was just testing them out or be like the noise, but he would not stop pacing all night long. It was driving me insane. Ricky finds these things that annoy Joe and he does them on purpose. (laughs) And Joe always reacts and Ricky loves the reaction. He loves it. I was laying. Ricky sounds like a bully. Mm-hmm. I was laying there in bed. He sounds like you guys on this fucking podcast. <laughs> yeah, he does. Hey, Anthony. Tap, 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 <laughs> tap, tap, tap. <laughs> it was like the telltale heart, but instead of the raven and the, the heart beating beneath the floorboards, it was his fucking little corgi feet pitter-pattering <laughs> all night. <laughs> I was telling Joe right before we started recording this because we were talking about this, and I could just feel the angry energy just like pulsating from him in bed and i was lying on my side just like well i'm gonna try to ignore it and go to sleep if i can and joe i could just feel it because he would lay there really still and then he'd do these big movements so like oh he's mad <laughs> one of those big movements was me taking off my pillowcase in the middle of the night and throwing it at the dog to make him stop moving <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to say you, like, threw the dog in and just threw him outside. (laughs) (laughs) Before you feel bad for the dog, the dog is all of 40 pounds, uh, 45 pounds now. Fat ass. You little chunky Uh, monkey. He's fine. He's fine. (laughs) Yeah, I don't feel bad for him. Yeah, there was nothing to feel bad about. He's a little asshole. He finds ways to, like, 
get attention. Like his present thing has been this hot spot he's got on the top of his right foot. And uh, he just licks it. He licks it and Joe gets mad at him about it. <laughs> well, because it won't heal. I know. I know. It's practically we should be making sure we put him in the cone, which we do. But like, it's just funny because he does it to get attention and it works every fucking time because there's n- you can't not pay attention to it. You have to deal with it. I had a dog that had a hot spot once and I ended up just having to like straight up wrap it with something. I was like, you're, you're going to heal. We, we tried that. And he tore it off twice. It's on his front little foot, so it's right in the perfect, perfect place yeah. for him to chew on it. Mm-hmm. And he gets what? down there and he gets into it. Mm, poor Ting. Oh, poor little baby. No, no don't you feel bad This is bad what he wants. Him. No. <laughs> Do not feel bad don't, for him. Fuck don't worry. Guy. Reggie's the same way. Reggie, like, gives you the best guilt face. But <laughs> he's a fucking little punk. And I'm just like, no, no, no. Like, I know what you're doing. I, no, you're not going to get my sympathy right now, little shit. You've been a little <laughs> asshole literally all day. And now this one thing goes wrong and you want me to be like, oh, you poor baby. No. Ricky never works, though, looks apologetic unless you step on his foot. And then he barks and bites at you. And then immediately he looks sorry about it. Like he did something. Every other time, he, he looks at you straight up like an asshole. Like, he knows exactly what he did, and he is yep. 100% proud of it. Every time. Little shit. Fucking dick. Yeah, he's a fucking <laughs> dick. Well, I know we have listeners who have corgis, so let us know. Do your corgis also treat you like they're assholes? Because I <laughs> I think there's like a 50-50 chance of whether you get asshole corgi or um, what? Like, zoned out space cadet corgi. <laughs> yeah i think it is just those two modes and i just know that frenchies in general are just shitheads that's just standard for a frenchie so that oh, we um, saw a frenchie at the store the other day he was so small we were at lowe's yeah mine's yeah. a big one mine's a big old honking frenchie <laughs> he's what's yeah, called an xl <laughs> XL. I mean, so am I. So uh, husky, say, bitch. Same. <laughs> I was husky. I bought husky jeans from Kmart. <laughs> I just can't I was get over how because I was like super skinny but also tall at the time, and now I'm just fat. I just can't get over how we'll be walking around Midtown, and all of a sudden, like these ladies will be like, "Oh my goodness, he's so sweet. Look at him, he's perfect." Blah blah blah. And then the guys will be like, "I love his stance." He stands so strong. And I'm like, good He's God. He's a dog. Calm down. The fucking same. <laughs> but he truly is the pig. Oh, he's on a little family chunk. Guy. Yeah. Oh, the he, pig he's on Family Guy. Said that. Oink. Oink. Like, that is him. He's got so much upper muscle. It's insane. Meanwhile, back in fall weather and fall in general. We should fall back into conversation. Hey, there we go. Let's talk about how uh, literally right now I have a couple of hoodies in the dryer. (sighs) Ooh, look, look. I'm wearing my shirt, like, Henley hoodie thing that I have. Oh, yeah, I I hate it. Uh, Well, you can fuck right (laughs) off. I don't care. I don't wear it for you. I wear it for me. Do you want to borrow one, Jay? You look a little cold. (laughs) No, I'm all right. Thanks, though. You uh, want to borrow one, Jay? It's dry. That's, that's just my... <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, now I need one. I was going to say, if you feel cold, it's just my heart. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I feel like yeah. out of the three of us, you're probably the nicest. Oh, you. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yep. yep, it's upsetting, but true. I wanted to be the mean one. You're not, Joe. Good try. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I am actually living for being able to wear fall clothes like this shirt. I love wearing it, but it's never like cool enough outside. And today we went to go eat lunch because I didn't go to work because I didn't feel well. And then Joe took me to go eat at the sandwich place and we sat outside on the patio and it was so nice. <sighs> cool Just sandwich, people. Jay. Mm. Oklahoma did have its first like real cold front the other day because yesterday morning, I woke up, got in my car, and I had a low tire pressure light, and that is my official trigger. That's the start of fall. fall. Yep. (laughs) When I get the first cold weather symptom that that pops up, I'm like, yeah. But then 
I was sitting at work today, and we're in a, uh, a frost warning tonight. Mm-hmm, we are. Ooh, so good for us. I know. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. We've and we don't have any plants to bring in because we gave up on plants. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's so right. cute. I never take them in anyways. I always like, whenever it, I plant, I just <laughs> let it die. <laughs> you're like, the frost is coming, and you look at them, and you're like, it's time. They're tomatoes. They're going to die anyway. <laughs> and what am i gonna do save cilantro fuck you cilantro you 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 come out on your tricycle like the guy on saw and you're like let's play a game <laughs> can you survive the frost <laughs> the answer is no they never do <laughs> you've been trapped in a pot your entire life so i will never forget the year that whatever fall finally hit like it got just blastedly cold overnight and it never got cold enough overnight before that for the tomatoes to ripen so i just kept having these fucking green tomatoes that had no fucking flavor and weren't ripe and it made me so bad because i put them all in a brown paper bag to help them ripen but they're ripening off the vine which means they're not going to be as good which defeats the whole fucking purpose of planting tomatoes i just buy them at the goddamn store Ooh. anyways well i've been angry about tomatoes ever since it was just 2020 that we had that insane um, ice storm in late October that was so detrimental because all the leaves were still on the tree. So then leaves and limbs collected ice. And that's what did some of the most damage to this state for such a long time because the trees couldn't support it. Honestly, though, Republicans have done the most damage to the state. Ooh, that's a good <laughs> point. Yeah, <laughs> Along with fall. We had Indigenous Peoples Day yesterday because we were recording this on a Tuesday. Oh. Our Department of Education posted a whole big post about celebrating Columbus Day. And I was like, our whole state, 100% of the land of the state is Native American reservation. Like, we don't, we don't live on regular land. We live on reservation land. All of us. You, you should have you, You're really fucking section. missing the fucking point. Oh, the comments were on point, though, because people were not having it good yeah i i I think education is going to be the hill that republicans end up dying on in this state because a lot of people just fucking hate the way they treat the education system and they keep shitting all over it especially ryan walters the guy who's over education right now in oklahoma republicans hate him I, well, everybody also, hates that dude but they keep electing him and i'm like what i know i know it's it, uh, it's nonsense they keep getting mad about it and they just keep electing them it's this weird divide that i keep seeing too especially in southern states where the education isn't getting any better because they're not voting to make it any better because they don't vote the right way well you can't I vote mean, blue that's just the only rule like that's, that's the only rule <clears throat> yeah there's no other rule you just go red Done. It's because Democrats want to have babies born and then murder them and then eat them and then also sell them and traffic them somehow. And then also we control the weather, but somehow we haven't killed Marjorie Taylor Greene with a thunderstorm or lightning or anything yet. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just confused <laughs> how we control the weather, but also bitch about how droughts are a huge problem and things like that. But we have control of the weather. <laughs> we can control the weather, bitch. You can guarantee T. Mar-a-Lago would not be above ground. No, Mar-a-Lago would read be gone. That, I read that the latest theory is that uh, they engineered the weather to take out Chimney Rock, North Carolina, because there's a lithium back, uh, plant there, and they wanted to control it and take all the lithium. What? People seriously believe that as a true what? thing. Uh, and they're well, threatening FEMA workers because yes. of it. So FEMA is pulling away their workers and making people go to FEMA offices to get aid instead of going door to door. FEMA so it's had literally to... the bad apples ruining the bunch. Yeah, FEMA had to back up from care because they were being threatened by militia. Yeah. Worried about them stealing lithium. 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 I just... It, it's, I, I was speechless I when I read it. I, I I'm sitting I here trying to process words. it right now. This, this, I, this is my first time I'm hearing about it. I this. guess I'm just pro- I'm trying to process where, how you're able to just go down this path and believe these stories. It's they it, people get it in their head, man. It's they they start 
part of what the human brain always wants to do is connect things. It tries to connect things even when there is no connection. It wants to make those connections regardless. And so once you start going down that path and something seems reasonable, then that next step seems more reasonable. Those connections start making more connections and you what would have been unreasonable to you five or 10 years ago is now completely reasonable. It makes a whole lot of sense. And it's just this, I, it, it, it is a bit of the human condition to do that, but it's also the very American ideal that you, if you have to take time to admit that you're wrong about something that you have failed. And that is a value that Americans hold, which makes us very different from a lot of people. But it's just not true. And so people grow up thinking that if you self-evaluate at any point in time, that if you question your own beliefs and morals, that you've got all these shortcomings. And so they don't do it. They never stop yeah. to think about how what they're doing is true or not true or effective or moral. They just do it because if you question yourself, you're wrong. And I think it's more common and normal than we're actually giving credit for because uh you look back and you think how on earth could people follow hitler and do the things that were so insane and then you're mm -hmm. like oh wait a minute because of this exact reason right now yep yeah it's exactly this and it is just oh my god it's cult mentality because things that seem entirely unreasonable become eh, that's pretty reasonable <clears throat> But yep, and then they anyways, just push it around and it becomes their believable narrative. Election season is around fall time. <laughs> it is technically yeah. a fall topic. <laughs> I keep bracing myself every day when I check a news source or get out my phone because I'm like, all right, what's the event? What's going to be the crazy it. wild card they're going to throw in right I before just, the election? I just don't do it. I just don't do that. Yeah, yep. I, I, it's it's a scenario where. Ignorance is bliss to an extent. I can't just be unaware of what's going on, but I also don't want to be too hyper aware. Right. Yeah, it's hard to find that balance. Yeah, real hard. I've so just gone hard. for the like option of just not looking at it for the most part, and then whatever big news happens usually filters over to me somehow, somewhere. <laughs> In the form right. of me and Jay. <laughs> the show. <laughs> yeah. today yeah <laughs> but do you guys think it's time to take a quick break we should we should it's a cool time to slide into a break <laughs> we're gonna take a break and then when we get back we're gonna talk about everyone's favorite topic laundry Hey listeners, are you ready to add some spice to your wardrobe? Check out HunkyTops.com, the queer Latino-owned clothing site that brings you the hottest styles. And here's an exclusive deal just for you, listeners. Get 10% off your first order with the code SUNDRIES. That's right, 10% off when you use the code SUNDRIES at checkout. They do offer sizes above 3XL, just hit the contact button and request a larger size and they'll accommodate the best they can. So, what are you waiting for? Visit HunkyTops.com today. Explore their amazing styles and wear your pride with confidence. HunkyTops.com. Wear your pride, live your style. Remember, HunkyTops.com. Use code SUNDRIES for 10% off your first order. Order now! You're listening to the Beards and Sundries podcast, the news source that still rated five out of six balls. <laughs> well, it's a real wash. <laughs> oh, you need to wash that shirt after how much sweat soaked into it. <laughs> no, I need to dry it. Jay needs a sweat trap. You're not going to get the sweat out of it. You're going to let it all be salty and crusty. Well, I'm sure. Why not? And your shirt. Isn't that <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every other article of clothing he owns is crusty. So why not that one? Yeah. So is my personality. But I, <laughs> I don't know why we chose um, laundry for the second, like the after break commercial. I think it was just because we were doing it at the time. 
No, but it actually works perfect because I have a interesting story for you that happened this weekend. And um, I was a little clumsy wumsy on Saturday and I was moving stuff in the laundry room and whatever I was pulling out, I happened to bump the shelf above my washer, which had stuff on it. And it had my jar of OxyClean <gasps> and a jar of detergent. Well, OxyClean's fine. Detergent jar launched up, fell off, landed in my washer, shattered. It was mostly full of detergent. So my washer was just full of detergent and glass. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and I, I like, stopped, and I literally said, what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, why, why am I so clumsy? Because that was the second thing I think I broke that day. And... uh I was about to reach in and grab glass, and then I just stopped and went, you know what? I'm going to do this later. I, I can't handle this at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> why Why is it little things like that that make me want to have the biggest breakdowns? Because I'll never forget forever ago, I was working in Owasso, and I got to work, and I was already not having a good day for some reason, probably because I was a general manager for a retail store. So, just, <laughs> Well, that could do it. Gives you a bad attitude in general. But... I go to make coffee and I fucking get everything set up. And as I'm about to like put the grounds into the top, I start sliding it in and my hand slips and the grounds just go everywhere. And I stared at them for what had to have been a full 60 seconds thinking, I wonder how much trouble I get it if I just left. Because <laughs> 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 I could just go right now because i don't want to be here or this is this is the thing that's causing me to not want to do anything this day <laughs> god when that shit goes wrong it's well i knocked a picture off the wall in the bathroom and shattered the frame on it the same day i also ended up knocking a jar full of q-tips off my bathroom counter and shattered it the same day and something else happened i can't remember it but it's because the detergent really just like topped the scenario and then I stepped away because I'm like, I'm going to reach in, cut my hand while I'm worked up about this and just be mm -hmm. so fucking pissed off. So I stepped away, came back later and then didn't cut myself. But I ran the washer on like four clean cycles and then would check for glass after it was over <laughs> to God. see if I was getting any more. <laughs> Let's Did, have a breakdown. Why do you speaking of breakdown? Why is there so much glass in your apartment? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's not now. <laughs> <laughs> also, what Problem detergent solved. are you buying that has a glass case on it? Oh, are you buying like I, I, artisan I, detergent shipped in from fucking the Himalayas? No, I I, I think I know it, this. Do you I, buy detergent and then put it in the glass container like those bitches on TikTok? I did. Because it was so mm -hmm. cute in my laundry room at my house. And here it wasn't as like is this aesthetic is my old house. And so I was like, do I still want to do this? And uh, the universe the answer said, is no, a collective. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you were buying detergent mm -hmm. that comes in its own container that has its own dispenser. In most cases, a plastic and container putting that it won't break into a glass container. So you were taking it from one container and moving it to another container specifically to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to look like at my fancy free like a fancy jungle juice container yeah <laughs> pretty much yeah but i i accept glass in the case of jungle juice <laughs> yeah i i was i was a basic bitch and i was like look at my glass jars that look like they're full of potions that wash my laundry i get it because that's my aesthetic too but like before you feel any kind of judgment, Jay, just know that Anthony has bought not only a glass container for his cold brew, he also has glass containers to make his cold brew coffee, iced coffee drinks in the morning to take to work with glass straws. BPA-free glass straws and machine washable. I now have all like <laughs> glass decorative different shaped jars for all of my oils and balsamics and all for cooking. So you look over and it looks all aesthetic. See, I don't do that because I'd have to have well, a whole bunch of fucking bottles. Anthony, you said several. they're machine washable, but be careful because you can't throw them in Jay's machine. They'll shatter immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I should have said dishwasher safe, not machine washable. Machine <laughs> Let me rephrase. <laughs> I mean, technically, 
I, so I ran, I think a lot of that detergent just drained on its own because I went to run it and I was kind of waiting to like come back to my laundry room and just see the, the comical like lid coming open with suds just pouring out. <laughs> just bouncing around. That would have been yes. funny though. That been I know. Funny. I kind of expected it and I was a little disappointed in it. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been annoyed that I had to clean it, but I would have absolutely been like, bad day hashtag in my defense in my cold brew habits i i have adopted this so that we can save money on energy drinks in the morning because i like a cold drink that has caffeine in it in the morning and so this is my compromise and it's aesthetically pleasing to me it makes me feel more like a cottage whore than i ever have been and i love that (laughs) yeah that's what's doing it for you (laughs) hey Shut up. <laughs> the cottage is just a recent upgrade. Uh, well, that thing's sort of cottagey. Yeah, it feels nice. I wanted to put shiplap on the walls, but Joe wouldn't let me. Okay, Joanna Gaines, <laughs> calm down. I wanted to do that in my master, but then I changed my whole plan, so I didn't have to worry about it anymore. Well, we settled for paint. It was cheaper and easier. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jake, That's... you could do stained glass. You've already got some pieces to work with. Uh, actually, one of the pictures on my wall is a frame that I dropped once and shattered the glass, and then I just put it back together and painted it, and then put like vinyl on it to make it look this m- m- mid-century modern cat design. And now it's wall art. <laughs> you should do that with your detergent container and just put it all back together in the little pieces. <laughs> um, yeah, that one I like scooped up in this big bowl and then dumped it in a box, taped the box shut, and then put it in a trash bag. <laughs> and I then was like... nailed it to Ryan Walter's office. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that I, for one, every time I walked through your laundry room at your house, saw that and said, good for him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've never seen it before in my life. I don't know how long you've had that, but I've been in and out of your laundry room a number of times because that's how you get out of your house most times. I actually didn't have it that long. Well. It makes me want to walk in there and be like, wow, this home and garden is plastic. (laughs) (laughs) I may buy a plastic jar next time if I do it, but I may just keep with the container it's in and learn my lesson. There you go. That's probably the smart way to go. (laughs) Maybe. Maybe. I guess if you don't want people to know that you wash your clothes, you could always go back to a third party container. (laughs) (laughs) What's what's in this jar? Magic? No. (laughs) Detergent. (laughs) <laughs> it's like magic. I don't know how it cleans, but doesn't oh bubble. Oh, God. I hate those stupid ads. Can we talk about the I just laundry break into a commercial recently? like that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we can talk about laundry ads. I love laundry ads. Oh, I hate them so much. It's like one of the worst forms of advertising because it's this stuff that's been around for years, and they keep finding like new ways to make it new scent booster or new whatever the fuck pattern is on the tide pods now or you know it's just this whole like why are we fucking around with this also laundry commercials are incredibly sexist because whenever yeah, they, they show a woman doing laundry she's like out in the backyard and she's like hanging the laundry on a line and like she's got like this white dress on and it's flowy and windy out and she's hanging her laundry up and they're talking about how fresh it is and then whatever pulling a sweater guy, out of the dryer and she's like yeah ah, mm-hmm. and she comes yeah. and it's just like oh my god all right <laughs> jesus i know it smells good fuck yep but when you see a guy doing laundry in a commercial he's always fucking it up yep just like a sitcom mm-hmm. yep Man can't sexism do anything is right. real Mm-hmm. Well, it's just this weird assignment of gender roles that I really hope dies soon because those are the things that irritate me most about our society. <laughs> I saw one recently and it was a dad doing laundry and like he had like five kids. And I was like, ew. But then like he took the laundry out of the dryer and whoops, he had put someone's red sweater in there and it turned all the little oh, boys of shirts no. pink. Oh, no. Oh. That hasn't happened in years. It doesn't it happen was like that anymore. The red karate belt. That he put oh, in there because yeah. I know which commercial you're talking about because it like he washed it with their white clothes, including the kids' gi, which is your karate outfit, mm-hmm. and it like stained it pink. Yeah. Granted, we later see that the kid is wearing the the pink gi proudly, so like at least they didn't make it real sexist. But yeah, it was I bet the karate stupid. instructor loved it. Well, so I, if you've never done karate before, a lot of times you're dyeing your own belts. Um. And so you have to like go buy the dye and like dye your own belt, 
whenever you get to a new <laughs> here level. die that's black it's so stupid but then like you that's that right is home. why it would actually do that in that situation but oh my god it was just uh, uh. hey what's the worst stain you <laughs> you can get in your clothing garlic <laughs> nasty stinky <laughs> garlic <laughs> And then the couple from the Magic Bullet commercial come in. They're like, you can do laundry in three minutes. Oh, God. <laughs> Just one, two. <laughs> yeah. and every time they're they shoving the a shirt in their Magic Bullet. And they're just like, one. <laughs> oh, my God, they're washing one sock at a time. The portable, the portable uh, laundry Magic Bullet. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Wash your clothes on the go. Boop, boop, boop. Tired of this blouse in the laundry that you want to wear? Just do it in three seconds. One, two. Oh, Did you nice. shit your pants at work? Well, <laughs> now you don't have to run home and change, and you don't have to drape your coat around your waist. You can wash <laughs> your clothes right at the office with the all-new Magic Bullet office portable magic washing bullet. machine. We haven't even gotten to the commercial yet. <laughs> 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 We're pre-making commercials. Yeah, that's this is what a good product. Into. Yeah, well, you know, we that's the whole thing this podcast is based on. We weren't even sure we were going to do it until we started making commercials. <laughs> until I was like, guys, let's try this stupid commercial idea. <laughs> well, I'll say that my last good thing about laundry that I want to say is that there are a few things better than going to bed on a set of freshly washed bed linens. Ooh, oh, bitch, yes. Mm-hmm. Crawl into that bed and it's just like, oh. oh. Or on this first cold day when you pull out a pair of hot pants from the dryer. Mm. I, I wear shorts. I know you around. mean hot as in warm and like freshly dried, <laughs> but I just. <tried. laughs> Ooh, yeah, getting my hot pants out of the dryer. Yeah. It's, it's making me think of that pair of pants from um, American Dad that Roger yeah. finds that make him look super sexy when he puts them on and they like change his whole entire shape of his body. But when he takes them off, he reverts back immediately. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, do you guys think it's time for a commercial? I think Merlin thinks it's time for a commercial. And now for a public service announcement about the Herpy Derpy Roo. <laughs> 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 I'm just itching to hear this one. Your PSA for the Herpy Derpy Rule from the Beers and Sundries Health and Wellness Aisle. Hey there, Timmy. Are you feeling a little itchy? Or maybe there's an unexpected tingle down there that seems to pop up when you least expect it. Well, don't you fret, because you might just be hosting the newest guest in town, the Herpy Derpy Roo. Or genital bumpy poos. That's right, folks, the Herpy Derpy Roo. Or genital bumpy poos. It's a fun little tag along that shows up at the most inconvenient times. Maybe you met it through a recent encounter. Or it could have been lying low for a while, just waiting to pop up to say hello. So, what exactly is the Herpy Derpy Roo? Or genital bumpy poos, you ask. Well, it's a pesky little sensation that might come and go often when you're least prepared. But don't worry, the Herpy Derpy Roo or genital bumpy poos isn't here to ruin the party. Oh no, it's just here to make things a little more spicy. Now I know what you're thinking. What should I do if the Herpy Derpy Roo or Gindle Bumpy Poos shows up at your door? Easy, don't panic. Give your friendly doctor a ring and they'll help you figure out how to keep your new friend in line. With a little bit of advice and modern medicine, the Herpy Derpy Roo or Gindle Bumpy Poos can become just a minor inconvenience. So don't let a little tingle get in the way of your day. Life's too short to worry about that little roo that comes along. So remember, the next time you feel that little spark, it might just be the Herpy Derpy Roo or Gindle Bumpy Poos checking in. And while it's not the guest you wanted, it's definitely one you can manage. 
Talk to your doctor today and get the happy derpy root or genital bumpy poos back under control so you can focus on the more pleasant things in life. The Herpy Derpy Rule. It's here to stay, but it doesn't have to stay too long. Hey guys, make sure you follow and subscribe to our podcast so you can receive a notification every Sunday when a new episode drops. Well, that was really educational as well. I mean, I I really did not know about the Herpy Derpy Roo until they showed us that late 60s, early 70s PSA about it. I didn't know it could be so fun. (laughs) It was, it seemed really interesting. Like, I, how do I get it? I mean, I see the drug commercials about it all the time and they all look like they're having a great day. (laughs) <laughs> I got it. I got it from sharing the mystery machine with my friend before <laughs> without washing it between. Them. <laughs> and I thought it was weird at the end when he said, Herpy Derpy Roo. <laughs> also, he was a dog. <laughs> I thought it was puppy play. <laughs> well, thank God you can get rid of the Herpy Derpy Roo with three easy to take pills. Every day of your life for the rest of your life. It'll go away <laughs> on the day you die. <laughs> <laughs> well, 24 hours after. Well, moving right along, in the same vein as our voicemail box, Jay, do we have any Beardo submitted sundries this week? Um, We... Sorry. I'm writing down <laughs> the commercial, so I won't forget it. And hopefully I'll actually do it this week. Yeah, you guys got my B-rate commercial this last week. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I loved how Sunday I was just like, oh my God. I that actually forgot. is why the episode came out later on Sunday instead of like Sunday morning was um, I had to still make the commercial and I forgot about it. And Joe at like two o'clock on Saturday was like, hey, uh, don't forget you got to uh, finish the podcast. I was like, oh yeah, I will. And I was like, fuck, am I supposed to make the commercial? He's like, yeah. I was like, fuck, I don't want to do oh, that. Oh, fuck. <laughs> did we already originally agree that you would make that commercial? We didn't agree to anything. Oh, okay. We just said it. Because <laughs> I think in my head, I was supposed to do it, and I genuinely, like... Neither of us, like, said we were going to do it, so I think that's where we went wrong. Well, and all fucking week was so chaotic, and that just fell out of my brain. Mm-hmm. But anyways, Joe, to answer your question from, like, three hours ago that you asked, yes. Like <laughs> <laughs> we do have... I'll say it this way: a user content. Oh Yay! <laughs> and it came from Peter. Peter. The horse is horse here. Is here. <laughs> Every time I wasn't going to say it, but I'm glad you did. It was titled "Crystal Method." Was the title of the email. Yes, it was Crystal Method. We figured this out afterwards. And yeah. I hey. just, oh. Hey, Beardos, that's the queen who is dressed like a pinata and had the hilarious, I like a bird lip sync, or I'm like a bird oh. lip sync. Sorry, I can't read. <laughs> I loved her the whole season and wish that she won, but overall, that was a great season and they were all amazing in the end. Speaking of things we quote all the time from the show, in addition to Aiden Zane's boo. We also do this one thing. I think it was Blue Hydrangea in some winter outfit came out and did this whole kind of sh I can't get it. Didn't she do that? Or was it just sh I thought there was a roll of the tongue to it. But anyways, then body shiver thing, or I don't know, it was something like that, but it definitely sticks in our mind. Anyway, love the episode, good chat, and a way to plug local drag shows too. I just went to a drag show last weekend, and it was so much fun. Love ya, Peter. P.S. Book socks. <laughs> Which I did get your mom's book sock and I laughed hysterically when I opened it. I loved it, mom. Thank you so much. What's the pattern on yours? Yeah, what is uh, the pattern on yours? It's alcohol drinks, and I'm sorry I don't have it in here oh. with me. Oh. So I'm gonna Fun. put that on a book at work. So book socks has clearly gotten to a different audience <laughs> they're still selling millennials i was like they're just you're aging them up with us yeah because <laughs> every time i look at a naked book in my house i think hmm, i really gotta get a brown paper bag to cover that with so two things about your email Peta. 
Uh, number one, yes, it was Crystal Method. And my favorite Crystal Method moment was when they were in the workroom and RuPaul asked her if she partook in uh, Mary Jane. And she just looked and she didn't know how to answer. And she just went. <laughs> it just made RuPaul laugh so hard because like she was on national TV. So she wasn't sure if she was like supposed to say yes. Yeah. So it was like this nervous way to answer it. So I thought that was super fun. And then number two. <clears throat> We haven't met Blue Hydrangea yet because we haven't gotten that far. We haven't. I think she's on uh, the World series, right? Like it's like versus the world. We haven't gotten into those yet, so we haven't seen Blue Hydrangea yet. But we'll keep an eye out. Well, I messed it up, I'm sure, because I've only seen a clip of it, and my memory is not good. Yes. Well, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, we figured out it was Crystal Method, like after the fact and oh i love crystal i i agree with you peter like it's i think crystal should have won but i also i couldn't be mad with any of the three of them winning like crystal gg and um jade essence hall were all great yeah oh wow joe has opinions (laughs) gg good got robbed i mean she was gg good but was she gg great she was better than jada essence i'm just kidding she was great Moving on. <laughs> Thank you very much, Peta. Yeah, thanks, Peta. <laughs> well, then, does anybody have anything to check out this week? There's a pussy on my lap. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's why you're so uh, sweaty. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm worn out. This one, she's... um. She's had like this little sniffles and sneezes lately because the move stressed her out. And today is her first day that she's feeling normal. Oh, well, she I've normal? been stressed too. Well, trust me, sweetheart. I've been stressed. Don't 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 get me wrong. I've been pretty fucking crazy. Well, since neither of you prepared anything to check out, I guess I can come up with a backup idea. This is not necessarily a something to check out but i have been drinking a lot of cold brew lately because i've gotten into it and let me tell you if you guys are out here buying cold brew stop it is so much easier to make at home oh my god just like a quarter cup of coffee grounds to a cup of like water and let that steep for about 12 hours on the counter and that's it super easy so i bought myself a little french press to do it with and i bought myself a um, carafe to put in the fridge so that once it's done, I pour it in the carafe and I put it in the fridge. And that's it. That's how you make cold brew. It's super fucking simple. Well, thank God I have a French press here for you. It's simple. Is it also affordable or is the price a little steep? Steep. (laughs) (laughs) We should percolate on this a little longer. (laughs) I wish I could wrap this up. I'm just sitting here trying to come in clutch like I always do. Come in a clutch. Yeah. (laughs) This is my come clutch. (laughs) I can't take it with me everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) I love your clutch. Thank you. It's for come. I leave the local park bathroom and it's just absolutely full. I I enter the park bathroom. (laughs) Come clutch first. (laughs) Okay, Bob. Just like Bob the drag queen. <laughs> first first, it's just like dripping. Jesus. <laughs> it's fresh. Oh. It's a pour over. What? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a donut hole. <laughs> Get that in there. Sorry, my brain's now back on Grand Theft Auto. I like to lick lovingly on the outside and thrust my tongue in the middle. Oh my god. I like god. to wear women's panties and walk along Fifth Street. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> We're doing an episode where we have a game where we do the do those commercials and then have to figure out what product they're for. Oh, I wonder if that would be copywritten. I I don't know. I have no fucking clue whether or not Rockstar really has any legal rights to the fictional advertisements that they make. I guess I that we would could... imply we have the legal rights to the fictional advertisements we make. Uh, 
Uh, I bet we could get by with it. Maybe we should. Maybe I should try that sometime. That just means I have to sit down and try. <laughs> Ugh. Yuck. Ugh, <laughs> yeah. Well, Yucky. <laughs> I know we don't have a game prepared this week, but do either of you have anything that's grinding your gears right now? A certain corgi. <laughs> like, sounds I was like your dog. To say, he barked at just the right fucking time, too, didn't he? He's tippy tapping. I can hear him out there because it's 20 minutes until dinner time. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They're stressing, uh, huh? Um, at the brief moment, I do have a hatred toward liquor for a hue for a just a brief time of time of t- time right now. Because I be because of the people from Chicago. I went out Saturday night with my friends and I met these new people from Chicago. Great group. Had fun. Um, some people bought shots and we hit some bars and got drinks and I was like, everything's great. And then I got home and I was like, it's not great. <laughs> Did you buy and spicy hot links for everyone again? No, thank God, because that would have been a real bad day the next day. And uh, so I vomited for a while and then woke up Sunday morning at 1015. Nice. I like That's rolled awesome. over, grabbed my clock, and I was like, 1015? I haven't seen this like waking up in ages. Well, you still woke up in time for church. Perfect. No, I went to lunch then after that with the same group, and that is where I heard Herpy Derpy Roo. Herpy Derpy Roo. <laughs> you know, we know all the dangers about it now, thank God. <laughs> I would have never known about it before then. Well, the only thing that's really grinding my fucking gears right now is being sick. I'm over it. I am so oh, tired. Man, it. the it fucking sinus insane. drainage. I, yeah, I feel like as I'm getting head older, season real quick. it's just like, it just lasts. It's been lingering for yeah. like two weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm finally off Sudafed now for a bit. I was on Sudafed because my sinuses were so bad. And then you can't, you can't get get Sudafed at the market because that's an aisle five. And we only have aisle four. (laughs) Jay, what did I tell you about trading sexual favor for Sudafed? (laughs) (laughs) Nathan, this is why you keep getting molested. <laughs> oh god yeah i uh and this has been a problem for everyone like i've known a ton of people going through this exact same thing so we all just sound gross at work mm-hmm. my boss came it's into just my keep office going yesterday around. to like talk to me because he was gonna be out of pocket for the next couple of days and um i started talking to him he's like you sound awful he's like thanks it's so nice <laughs> i appreciate you it was a combination of the fact that I was also, I was sick, but also I it was I, the, he was the first person I talked to all day. I hadn't spoken to a person. <laughs> Hello. I don't know. I don't do it till like ten a.m. What day was it that was it Friday or something like that? It, whatever day it was, I sounded fucking awful, and I, I think I was like talking. Oh no, it was Thursday night. I was. I got in late to the hotel in Houston and I was like, I'm checking in because <laughs> I'd been on the road for hours and like didn't say anything. And then I was like, I'm checking in. Oh, my God. Sorry. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> you got to blow right into my stoma. <laughs> I I started making the uh, commercial for this last week and I sat down and I hit record in my uh, audacity software. And I let 10 minutes of silence go by. So I have a background noise like clip to run. And um, the second I started talking, I was like, do you <laughs> And I had to stop recording immediately? Because <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> well, hopefully we all have a good speedy recovery. We can get to enjoying fall to the fullest. But ah. if you guys are OK with it, I found a little mini game for us to close out on before the music comes back on. Let's do it. <laughs> OK. So I just went on to BuzzFeed real quick, everyone's favorite, and I found a quiz that is entitled, It's Unofficially Autumn Now, So Let's Find Out Your Fall Aesthetic. And this is from Ooh. September 1st, 2021. So we can go through this and we can find out what our individual fall aesthetics are. Let's go ahead and start with the first one. It says, first off, how would you describe yourself? The options are ambitious, outgoing, kind, and mysterious. I'm going to pick myself as mysterious. Same. 
Same. Okay. Number two, as we go down this, what's your zodiac? All right. Well, I'm, I'm a big Isaac old shit. Sag. <laughs> I see your Sag hanging out over there. <laughs> I'm a Good Scorpio. God. Wow. That was quite those little sneaks. <laughs> it scared me to death. Well, in case All you didn't right. know what my sign was from Jay's screaming like a girl. <laughs> 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 I'm a Scorpio. Okay, next one. What's your favorite fall activity? The options are watching scary movies, trick-or-treating, pumpkin picking, and apple picking. I am going to go with watching scary movies. Same. Same. Okay. I watch scary question. movies year-round. I just do it a lot more in fall. Next question, what's your favorite aspect of fall? Changing leaves, pumpkin spice, spooky vibes, or sweater weather? I oh, am it, going pumpkin to... Spice. I'm a classic West Virginia kid. I'm going to go with changing leaves. And I'm going to go with spooky vibes. I love it all. That's the worst part. Sweater weather is yeah. my least favorite, but I still love it. Yeah, yeah it's like a really tough one to pick. Actually. Yeah. Okay. Next up, pick something sweet. The options are candy corn... Oh. Look, Twix, gross. Snickers, Reese's, all the good stuff, candy bars, pumpkin pie, or apple pie. I'm pumpkin going to pie. go with all the good stuff. I like chocolate. I'm going to go with apple pie. I prefer an apple pie. Good choice. Oh. I love them. Mm. All right. Next up, what would you dress up as for Halloween? Something scary, fake blood, mask, and everything. Something no one even knows. Probably one of my favorite characters, i.e. Marvel... Hogwarts, Cleopatra, or something simple like a ghost or witch. I would probably do. I don't know. I usually go for humor with my costume. I do too. I'm gonna go with something no one even knows. Yeah, actually, I'll go with something. It. I'll go with something simple, just for the fact that I work hard to make the costume not difficult but funny. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, you know, I went with something no one even knows, and it's because a lot of times the characters I like are references that people don't get. Like, year before mm -hmm. last, I was Jackie Daytona, and people didn't get it. Well, it does sound pretty awesome. Right. Fuck you. <laughs> okay, and then lastly, <laughs> what fall color do you think you resonate with? The options are orange, yellow, brown, and red. Uh, hmm. Orange, because of my beard. I think I'll go with Orange as well. I'm doing yeah. red. Red is my vibe. Okay, so for our results, you want to go in intro order? Yeah, sure. I got Halloween vibes. I'm generally spunky, bold, and adventurous human being, and I love to hang out with friends and have a fun time, although I may be aloof at times. What? You really are <laughs> the life of the party and give off the best energy. Everyone needs a friend like you. I agree with that. Oh, well, thank you. I got something a little different. Oh, what'd you get? You got dark academia. You're Sounds generally right. a very intelligent, introverted, and mysterious person. You often have a book in your hand and enjoy keeping to yourself. Although many people see you as closed off, you just are really particular about who you let into your inner circle and truly trust. You're honestly really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty true. That is pretty close. <laughs> and then I also got Dark Academia. So Ooh. what Anthony just said. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> but I like the color blue, so that wasn't an option. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could have been blue academia. Slightly right. brighter academia. <laughs> but now that we've done this, we've determined that Jay is the most jovial one of the three of us. I think <laughs> I hear the music <laughs> coming back on. <laughs> and you know what? It's the Ballad of the Witch's Road from Agatha All Along, which hopefully we talk yes. about for this month as well. But go call our hotline real quick at 405-999-2242. Beardos, it's 405-999-2242. And leave us a voice message to open the next episode with. Do it! <laughs> And Beardos, our Samsung dryer just began its 45 second song, signifying the end of its cycle. So it's time for us to put on a nice warm sweater. If you'd like to help us out, go and subscribe to our podcast so you can get reminders every Sunday when we release a new episode. 
We also post frequent updates on all of our scary social media sites for any additional sundries that we add to the market. And don't forget to rate us five pumpkin spices and leave us a review. Those reviews are what get us found by more spooky listeners like you. And also, just if each one of you could tell a ghostly friend about our podcast, you'd double our ghost listenership, which I think is presently at zero. <laughs> <laughs> and don't, don't, don't let it get too spooky of an idea, but go see our socials. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> the Instagram, <laughs> the threads, the TikTok, and the facebook i forgot which ones i said oh Oh, no oh god the boomer one um (laughs) you can email us spooky things at beards and sundries at gmail.com or go check out our website beards and sundries.com to buy some merch it's not spooky for you there (laughs) also phones it in call us at 405 999-2242. Nine 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 two two four two. Sorry, I work with two phone numbers on a regular basis, and I almost said the wrong one. <laughs> the other one's my sex hotline. <laughs> Any <laughs> spooky, <laughs> sexy things to you? Are you wearing clothing? <laughs> Is that a sheet over your head, or are you a clan member? <laughs> Well, it's fitting that Jay's talking about his sexual prowess because from the three of us cold fronts here at the Beards and Sundries Market, make sure to love yourself. (laughs) Because we already love you enough to end this fucking episode. Bye, Beard. (laughs) Bye. Bye.